And first off today, we're going to talk about how there's been a huge increase in the price tag for top tier tight ends in the NFL. We've recently seen 49ers tight end George Kittle sign a five year, $75 million deal. Then just a few hours following that deal, we saw Travis Kelsey agree to a new extension, which he got four years and $57 million. So this is obviously setting a new standard for tight ends in the NFL where they're paid like some of the top players around the league, which one year after the Lions drafted another tight end in the top 10, it's possibly looking like a smart move. Instead of waiting for one of these top tight ends to hit the market and then overpay for possibly an older or less effective player that when you could draft one for cheaper and hope he turns into one of those top tier in the first four years of his year. So, Jimmy, what are your thoughts on the tight end market as it stands today? Yeah, I think this is actually good news for the Lions. So let's talk about the numbers. So Kittle is $15 million a year. Kelsey is $14 million per year approximately. Kittle got more because he's younger. He's 26 years old compared to Kelsey, who's 30. Mm -hmm. uh, Kittle also only had one year left on his current deal, whereas Kelsey had two years left. So Kittle had a lot more leverage, and he's a lot more valuable of a player given he's younger. Mm -hmm. Now, as a point of comparison, let's talk, look at the franchise tag numbers for different positions. The tight end tag this year was $10.6 million, according to the source over the cap. Mm -hmm. The offensive tag, franchise tag, $15 million. The wide receiver tag, $18 million. So we're starting to see these elite tight ends starting to move into uh, the bigger numbers that we see with wide receivers and other more valuable positions. Yeah. So the question is, how does this impact the Lions? Well, one of the main negatives of the TJ Hawkinson pick at number eight in the first round was that we weren't getting as much contract value drafting a tight end as most other positions. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the most biggest difference, it would be at quarterback. If you can get a starting quarterback in the first round, you're saving 25 to 35 million a year. Yep. Defensive end is another big one. We've seen this recently with Joey Bosa getting 27 million a year. Yep. Leo Mack got 24 million a couple years ago per year. So tight end historically has been an undervalued position, but it looks like it's starting to catch up and tight ends are starting to shrink the gap now. Yeah. TJ is currently on a four year, $20 million contract. So if he can turn to a top five level tight end, we are getting a pretty good value. He's getting 5 million a year. Mm -hmm. If he can be playing like a 15 million a year guy, we're saving, we're getting a $10 million Delta there. Oh yeah. It's a huge deal. Especially as you mentioned those, the level that tight ends have taken in the NFL has been uh, immense. They used to be just mostly blocking and kind of like an extra lineman who maybe sometimes would go out and catch a slant pass or something right like that. But now they're turning like, as you mentioned, into full fledged wide receivers. And some of them like possibly TJ Hawkinson could be fully featured as a wide receiver of offensive threat on the team going forward. Yeah, so. absolutely. They are so valuable. And I feel like the NFL has undervalued them for many years because yeah. you see on some teams like the Patriots with Gronkowski, he's their number one wide receiver. Yep. And with the 49ers, Kittle's their number one target. Mm -hmm. He's their, the guy you have to worry about. Exactly. Yeah. You could argue that. I mean, same thing in Kansas city besides Tyreek Hill, who else is there besides Travis Kelsey? Yeah, they got a couple other guys, Sammy Watkins and Nicole Hardman. Yep, but yeah, yeah, Kelsey is the guy. Kelsey's ability to make guys miss after he catches the ball yep. is almost phenomenal. It's unbelievable given how big he is. Yeah, exactly. So we also have another special guest who wants to join us today. Jimmy's daughter, right, Singh, wants to come on, talk about Sing, TJ. She's a big TJ Hawkinson fan. All right, so you see she's got her uh, TJ Hawkinson jersey on. Oh, eyes. yeah. Give that it's a Hawkins and not a Mike Williams. <laughs> <laughs> Random player. Right. All right. So, Sing, how old are you? Ten. All right. Uh, who's your favorite player with the Lions? TJ. All right. Well, why is TJ your favorite player? Is it because he's so athletic? Or is it because he's good looking? Or is it because you don't know any other players? Basically. <laughs> By default, he's your favorite player because you don't know any other players? Yeah. Do you know... Any other players on the Lions? Mm, I don't know. You know, okay. <laughs> what did you think about TJ's playing last year? How well he did last year? Well, he could have done better. Really? How so? I wish he didn't jump over those two <laughs> guys. Oh, uh, yeah. Jump. And get that concussion? Yeah. Yeah, so what should she, he be doing this year to be better? 
um, not trying to jump over two guys. Okay. All right. All right. So I want to thank Jimmy's daughter, Singh, once again for coming on, giving her thoughts on TJ Hawkinson. 